guys welcome back to my channel Anissa's adventures I know I have definitely been out of commission for a really 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 long time you know it's been a while since I've posted anything substantial but I just wanted to tell you guys I'm back now I'm gonna try to post every week if I don't please don't kill me you know your girl has just definitely been going through a lot over the last I'd say six to nine months it has definitely 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 been an adventure it's definitely been a journey and one of the reasons why I decided to you know get back into YouTube is show I could share those journeys with you guys you know just so I could show you what's been going on what's been happening and to hopefully inspire you know someone else out there so keep watching remember to hit that like button leave a comment and share with someone who you think might need this message now today's video is going to be about my nine grueling days at the hospital i was admitted to ua hospital university hospital of the west indies for nine days, March 2nd to March 11th. Now let me tell you guys something. Them day there, I never did a deal with me nice. It was not a pretty experience. It was not an easy one. But I'm here today just to tell you guys, you know, everything that's been going on and share my story. So my hospital stay, you know, really and truly started from back in September. 2021 September 28 to be exact I experienced what is called a TIA or a minor stroke you know for easier words I had a minor stroke and I spent two days at the St. Anne's Bay Regional Hospital and they you know eventually discharged me they did their test they did everything that they needed to do sent me to do a CT scan sent me to do an MRI and in the end they said okay you experienced a TIA but you know there's no major issue or any long-term effects so I said alright them boops bop my alright you know function like normal I felt okay I felt not necessarily 100% but I felt alright you know so I was functioning like normally until about November December I realized my health started to drastically deteriorate my energy levels were declining I could no longer get up out of bed I was exhausted I was tired I was frustrated um, I was depressed I was everything you know at the time I was living in St. Anne um, but I made a decision to come back home to Kingston you know to live with my mom and thing and so in February of 2022 I decided to go and get my MRI done and that's when they said okay you have hydrocephalus now hydrocephalus is basically a buildup of fluid in the brain liquid fluid in the brain um and what that means is that it can cause like swelling of the head it puts pressure on the brain you know because there's nowhere for the fluid to go so they said okay you have hydrocephalus now upon that diagnosis i went to go and see a neurologist right or a neuro consultant at kph my mom you know we have a wonderful neighbor that works at kph and so i was able to get through rel relatively quickly relatively easy and i went to see the neurologist and they did all these tests you know that knee test the elbow test everything memory tests i spent like maybe an hour seeing or two hours seeing the neuro consultant I don't know why the breeze is behaving like this um, but I spent a really really long time seeing the neurosurgeon the neuro consultant rather and at the end of it all he said to me okay we're gonna have to send you to the hospital for emergency surgery this is really serious now you can imagine at age 22 having a minor stroke and then my birthday is in December so fast forward to February at age 23 hearing that you're gonna have to do surgery brain surgery at that it was not an easy feeling every time I think about it I try not to cry um, but it was really and truly not the easiest thing to hear um, I remember I was sitting there after he had told me everything giving me the papers to go up to 
Yui. I was just sitting there and with my grandma and I called my mom and I told her and then I called my pastor um, and I told him and of course you know there were words of encouragement and prayers and everything going up instantly but at the same time I couldn't help but feel worried and afraid you know um, so anyways I got to the hospital I was admitted and they put um, the IV needle in my hand now anybody know me mean or ramp with needles I'm gonna play them game them gonna like them nothing at all so you can imagine just the sheer fear alone of having that IV needle in my arm was enough to traumatize me like I don't like needles any at all blood tests nothing at all anybody that knows me knows that Anissa does not play those games so that in and of itself was frightening that's when it actually clicked in my brain say yo you admit it something seriously wrong with you and I remember the neuro the neurologist from Yui he came you know and he was a super 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 nice man you know Dr. Crawford I'll never forget him he's not from Jamaica I don't I think he's from Trinidad or something like that because he has an accent super 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 nice man um, very understanding him and his team. I remember him. I remember Dr. Ferguson. She was a very nice doctor in training and everything um, He came to me and my mom with a paper and he started to list out all of the side effects of the surgery You know because that's procedure you have to know what you're getting yourself into And I remember at the bottom of the list It said death at the bottom of the list the last side effect or consequence of doing this surgery was death and I looked at my mom and she looked at me and she held my hand and she could see she could see that I was um she could see that I was scared but I was terrified but I was trying to be brave I was trying to be strong because that's how my mom raised me and when I saw the death and he said, you know, this is something that you have to sign, you have to consent to this. In that moment, I felt like I was signing away my life. I felt like this is it. I can't handle surgery. I'm not built for this. Something is going to go wrong and I'm going to die. You know, that, that, that Tuesday evening, that Wednesday evening rather, I felt like it was a second. I can't remember if the second is a Tuesday or a Wednesday, but that evening, while he read out those consequences and everything to me, I just knew that I felt like this was it. You know, this is it. You're not going to make it. Enjoy the last, last few hours while you can. But I never said that to anyone, not even my mom that was sitting beside me. I just signed it and, you know, that was it. Now, the first and last day at that hospital were probably the most grueling for me. The first day was or the first night rather was particularly tough because that night someone died and you never really realize you're in the hospital until someone dies and everyone in the hospital all of this noise everyone in the hospital is functioning normally doing what they gotta do working patients are sleeping or doing whatever you want to do you're breathing while someone is taking their last breath right you're breathing while somebody is taking their, their last breath that happened twice while i was there the first night and the second the first night and the last night and when every time i think about those moments i become so emotional because i'm still living i'm still here while someone else was taking their last breath you know and my overall experience was just so great and so bad at the same time you know I did have a team of doctors and nurses that were on the ball every day but every single day I wanted to go home every day they came back with news okay you're gonna see the neuro neurologist tomorrow okay you're gonna see the neuro consultant tomorrow okay you're gonna see the neuro specialist tomorrow every day it was a different thing and I felt like I wasn't making any progress. I remember on the Saturday, right? I was admitted on a Wednesday. I remember the following Saturday or the upcoming Saturday. 
I started to get blood thinner injections. So once again, you know me, I don't like needles. Now you can imagine someone that gets blood thinner injections four times in one day. How hurtful and how painful that must be for somebody that doesn't like needles. You know, that was so heart wrenching for me. I remember messaging my mom, calling my mom, and I'm like, Mom, I can't do this. I want to go home. I don't care if I die at home. I want to go home. I was prepared to die. Anyways, I truly believe that God intervened in my situation because I ended up not doing surgery. Why? Dr. Crawford, Dr. Ferguson, their team, they ended up taking a second look at my MRI results, right? From the time I was admitted to the hospital in St. Anne, when they sent me to do an MRI because of the TIA or the minor stroke that I had, they sent me to do an MRI and then those doctors at UA, they double checked the MRI and they said, hmm, this might not be hydrocephalus. This might not be what we think it is or what these other doctors or physicians say it is. So we won't have to do surgery. And that alone was a weight lifted off of my shoulder. That alone was... Was... It was amazing news, but I still wasn't, I wasn't out of the woods because here I am in the hospital. Okay, it's not hydrocephalus, but what is it? You know, my dog is eating and he literally just choked. <laughs> Anyways, it's like, it's not hydrocephalus, but what is it? What's going on in the brain? You know, you want answers. You're here in the medical facility. You want answers as to what is going on with you. And there were just days and days and days and then no diagnosis, doing all these blood tests. The doctors can't tell me what's wrong because they don't know what's wrong. So it was just day after day after day after day. I was literally taking it a day at a time. And I remember once again God intervened and my neuro specialist, the neuro specialist, the neuro consultant, the head of the head hunter came to see me. She's a member of Escarpment Road or Eastwood Park, one of those E's. I think it was Escarpment Road, New Testament Church of God, Dr. Amoy Henry, right? It's either Escarpment Road or Eastwood Park Road. Um, she ended up coming to see me and I'm telling you, God placed the right people in my life at the right time. She came and she assessed everything that was going on and she gave me a testimony that I'm, sure, I'm gonna share with you guys later on in a separate video because it's just a lot in and of itself. But my entire journey, I know, was one of faith and one of patience and one of just overall pain, you know. And I'm glad I made it out, you know. And even after the doctors looked at the MRI and everything, they said, all right, then, what's the final diagnosis? They said, I have hemiplegic migraine that's migraine that's triggered by certain auras light sound allergies that type of a thing so like even now my transition my glasses they have transition lens because i can't really handle too much sunlight when i'm going to like church or any function where there might be noise i have to wear earplugs or earpods you know earbuds those kind of things headphones you know over my ears to kind of block out some of the noise I, while I was in that hospital, I thought I was going to die. I thought I was going to do surgery or I thought that just the sheer fear of being in that hospital, not having anyone around me, no family, no friends. When you're by yourself, after visiting hours are finished and you're by yourself, I kept saying to myself, I might not make it out of here. But the one thing I realized I lacked was faith. It was faith. I remember the day when I was told I was going to do surgery, the Wednesday, the March 2nd. A church sister of mine, Auntie Melrose, called me and she, and she told me, dirt just went in my eye. She told me to read Psalms, all of the Psalms that relate to health. Health, wellness, all of them. And... It wasn't until the night that I started to read Psalms and I came across Psalm 23. 
and that night I prayed like never before and I knew for a fact not only was I praying but I was believing somehow that God was gonna change my situation it wasn't until praying it was the next day I realized that that's when the neurosurgeon Dr. Crawford came back and said okay we're not gonna have to do surgery anymore who else could that be but God who else could that have been but God I was literally laying there they listed out all the consequences they were so sure that I was gonna have to do surgery but because of God because I prayed because I not only prayed out of action but I prayed out of faith because of my prayer and the prayers of the people around me people praying and interceding on my behalf everything changed literally overnight everything changed now I want to share this story or I have shared this story with you guys because I want to encourage you that while you might be in your hospital season God can discharge you while you might be in your lame season God is gonna allow you to walk again you might be in your deaf season God is gonna allow you to hear again you might be in your blind season but God is going to allow you to see again it's not over for you until God says it's over there's always brighter days coming things might be tough now things might be rocky now you might not see a way out I didn't see a way out when I was in that hospital but I want to encourage somebody to trust in God trust in God and be patient it might not be today it might not be next month it might not be next year but trust in God and he will carry you through all right guys if you've made it to the end of this video I want to thank you for listening to me I want to thank you for your support so far you know this channel wouldn't be what it is without you guys so I just want to say I love you and again I'm definitely gonna do my best to try and post at least um, at least once a week you know coming up with content is not easy but I want this channel to be a personal and business channel because you guys know I have my personal life and then I have my businesses. So I definitely want this channel to intertwine the two. But that's my story. Alright, so there is football going on. So yeah, my neighbors are pretty crazy. So I just want to say to somebody keep the faith keep strong God loves you no matter how far you think you've walked God loves you stay safe guys